All right, so next thing, we can either take the blade off, or we also have to take the control panel off because we're gonna be cutting pretty much where it's at. So let's take the control panel out. Make sure you're, uh, make sure you're not plugged in. Obviously, if you're doing this yourself, but I will say after kind of getting into some of my other Ryobi tools, um, stuff's pretty easy to uh, take apart. It's nice and it's cheap. So because it's cheap, you know, I don't feel as bad if I break something. <laughs> which is possible. All right, so you see that in there? You just kind of want to get to the side. And then just pull this out of here. You'll see what we got. So we got, we got our ground terminals there. We got our power cord coming in there. And... All right, boys, so we took, um, took this apart. Um, you can see that I cut it. Um, <laughs> clean in half just with a hacksaw um took a while but you just just saw right through it um so my plan is to put about 10 inches here um that's what i saw the guy do in the video that i watched so that's what i'm kind of referencing so i don't really have any really bigger number to go with because if i do 10 inches um let me see if i can angle this real quick I'll show you from the base of the cut, the bandsaw. I mean, I'm going to get about a foot of clearance. That's really, that's all I need. So I'm hoping that the motor can power that. Um, if not, I'm going to have to either, a couple possibilities. You can see that the motor is pretty, pretty simple, just on a pulley with the band in there. So what I can do is either one replace the motor which is possible or two um move the cut right here get a longer pulley put it on there move the motor off the here build a mount mount a bigger motor in the back that has the same um i don't know what you would call it like an axle size or what but the same as that put that there and it should take care of it. So that's that's the glass reserve option. Hoping I'm not have to do that, but it it is possible. So um, wouldn't be the worst thing in the world to do that. Um, yeah, right now you can see what I'm doing is I'm, I had to rig up some way to measure the new bandsaw um, size. So I just put a string around there, wrapped it tight, and I cut it in half. So I just have to measure this um, around to figure out what size um what size bolt or what do you call it? a saw saw blade yeah what kind of, what size band saw blade i need for a 10 inch extension um again 10 inches is kind of arbitrary just just because i saw it in the video i know it works uh, let me take that off the mount it's way easier i don't know if i'm gonna do something bigger because i like to have it even bigger i like to have it like i like to have a big one like 20 inches extension and I know for sure I have to put a bigger motor on that for a fact um, I'm hoping that this one can crank through but if not you know it's possible I'll just have to modify it even more but honestly it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world I, I do have to consider um, when I'm doing this is how am I going to move this extension because I do want to keep the uh, you know the blade guide somewhat intact I might have to I don't know, this is the mystery kind of here. I might have to like somehow extend this to reach down all the way here. Um, I'm not quite sure how long I'm gonna do yet there because at minimum, you're always gonna have this, uh, this much opening, which is pretty big for uh, small pieces. Um, so I'm not sure yet. So yeah, we'll see. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna measure this, see what it is, and then I'll get back to you. All right, so I got um, a plate of steel. You can see, I'll show you which I, what I got, um, solid angle, eighth inch thick by 36 inch long, um, and one and a half inch wide there. So I cut it in half at uh, 18 inches both. Um, so 
I'm going to take this, um, and you can see it just is going to fit around there. Um, I'm going to put two on here, so I'll get 10 inches of new clearance when I put this on. So basically, I'm going to drill that in there, put the top one on, and then, um, yeah, so it shouldn't be too bad. All right, so I just put the steel on. Um, I just put these self-tapping uh, screws in here, there, um, back there, and right there. So um, this one is just my cutoff. I I didn't want to cut another piece off, and I didn't think that. I felt like having this here also helps add rigidity because it's you have material this way so it can't flex on itself so um it's pretty uh it's pretty rigid though i mean it's not moving so this is uh again this is 10 inches um i've already measured for the saw length i need the saw blade saw blade length um other thing i have to consider is how i'm going to extend my uh the drill guy or the blade guide there um it shouldn't be that big of a deal it's not too it's not too complex you can see that the guide is held on by the screw here it looks like so i could just um, make an extension maybe even out of wood or something let me see the focuses um to bring it down more to about i, I don't know somewhere so you can extend it but i'll figure that out um, i just want to really get it up and running uh, with the right size blade on it and see if the motor has enough power that's really going to be the biggest um variable here but yeah so pretty easy these are the screws i used if you're interested um if it focuses there boys there it is uh, i just got them from tractor supply um same with the steel so um only about 20 25 bucks in material something like that to extend it so um, yeah, we'll see how it works. All right, so I'm starting to work on the wires. Um, what I'm going to have to do is I, I put two new holes for the ground wires, um, just with the same tap screws, and then I kept the same, um, let's call it like locking kind of washer there above the terminal. Um, so that should be fine because it's it's mounted in the same metal that it was before. Um, and then these, um, I disconnected all the terminals, but then I accidentally pulled one of the wires out, which is not a problem, I'll just put it back in. Um, but I'm going to, because this is the front, right? So this is the way I have to, I don't really want to reach around the back because that, that way, because then I'm like reaching by the saw, I don't really want to do that. So I want to keep the, you know, this still on the front. So what I'm thinking is uh, very unintentionally, I made this, um, <laughs> that it could fit so i might build a housing like that i might extend the wires to mount this in like a block of wood um i don't know i don't know what the best thing would be because i gotta the wires are super short um so you have to extend the wire i don't know what gauge wire this is it doesn't look like that big maybe oh 16 14 i don't know something like that but um i need to figure out where to mount this this is the switch and i i can't cut a hole like in the steel without sacrificing some of the structural integrity so the housing idea would work the best if i just make something here wires hide there and then it slips there uh, that would that would be ideal i think um but I don't know how I'm going to do that. Hmm. You know, I have, um, just, I have these things I've never used. These, uh, these corner braces. I wonder if I could build, attach that on there and then attach it to the side. And then it would just kind of rest above that. that I'll tell you what, guys, that might actually work. So, hold on, let me open this up. I'll put this down quick also it's like super windy outside so i have to keep the door closed otherwise sawdust blows all over me but basically what i'm thinking i could do is attach a corner brace to here like that right so then 
then I can attach the housing to this and it'll just rest there. And then I can put like a piece of um, just sheet metal, you know, bend it around the wires and then that makes a housing. I might, uh, I might do that guys. That might be the easiest solution for this. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. All right, so let me explain the housing real quick. Um, basically, I got these like L brackets. I bent them just to get this shape. Um, if you can make sense what's happening. So this is gonna house all the wires. Um, so the wires are all wired up right. Everything's good. Um, I'm basically making a house here to, it's gonna sit um, inside those holes, right? And it's gonna seal up on that side. And then I'm making a, a top right here. It's just gonna cover that. Um, and then probably a one for the bottom too. Um, so that's the plan. I think it should work fine, at least for covering the wires. I don't get a bunch of dust on it. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna do that. All right, so you saw it turn on. Um, I still have to put the, um, what's this called, the, the plate on it. Um, at some point I have to build like a kind of off the table for this so I can slide big material through this. Um, but I'll see the majority is up and running. So I'll put this on. I'll take this off the tripod. Um, Okay, so it's still plugged in, so I'm not going to power it up, but this is the box, at least for right now. Um, the houses, you can see I got the two ground wires there, and then the rest uh, focus are back in there. At some point, I obviously have to encase this in something. I might, I don't know, I might wrap it in like, I don't know, guys. I might wrap it in some kind of like electrical tape. Um, the whole thing and just kind of house it off with that because i like it to be dust proof um as much as i can but i'm not sure um this l bracket system worked pretty well um this is only mounted at the top so i still have to fix that a little bit but for right now it's perfectly fine until i completely enclose it um yeah the whole thing's pretty sturdy though i mean obviously the whole thing's just rocking on the bench it's not the top that's doing that um but yeah so you get a lot more uh, clearance look over my tape on here um, my tape measure right, right there so let me set this down to the blade and i'll show you guys Yeah, with it up all the way, you get about 13 and three quarter, um, which is a lot. Before it was just at three and a half. So I mean, this is a considerable upgrade. Um, I could do some test runs with uh, bigger pieces, obviously, but um, for right now, I mean, it works, runs. It took, um, it took the saw blade perfect. It's got the right sound to it. So I think I'm pretty happy with my measurement there. Um, I gotta test it on bigger pieces, see how the motor does. But for right now, I'm pretty happy with how it came out.
All right, how's it going everyone? So you just saw it cut through um, 12 inches of a monkey pod slab. Um, took a while, you have to go slow with it, um, but it can cut through it. Uh, monkey pod's not the hardest wood, so I have to try um, maybe with like a walnut or like a, um, a maple or something like that. It probably wouldn't be able to cut as far. Um, again, you have, let me get my tape measure real quick. You have this much cutting room. Um, so you have over a foot of cutting room, which is, I mean, way more than I need. You can move this up too to give you a little more, move this down. Um, like I said earlier, I probably will have to uh, adjust this to be able to move it down lower. At the lowest setting currently, it is a 10 inch opening, which is pretty, pretty crazy. Um, but if you move it all the way up, I mean, you're going into some really crazy territory of, I mean, you're, but you're a 13 and a half. Um, I mean, which is insane. Like I have no, I don't intend to, to resaw anything 13 and a half inches wide, but, um, you know, this is really nice to get nice, really big pieces of wood. I mean, this is a great side piece. This is a good piece for, um, like a back of something, a top. I mean, you can get a number of pieces out of that. So I'm really happy with how this came out. Um, I did have to change the blade, I will say that. So the blade I got is an 82 inch by half inch by four TPI blade. Um, I originally got an 82 inch by one quarter um, width by six TPI blade and that did not work. That was, it, 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 it didn't cut, it bogged up the motor. Um, my guess is because the blade itself was a little too flimsy, so it would move. And also because it was six TPI, so six teeth per inch, um, it, it just, it, it, it required too much power to move all the teeth through. Uh, originally, I wanted to go even lower than four TPI, but this is what I got on Amazon. This is like the first and available option. So that's what I went with and clearly it works. Um, I probably could get a little better performance if I move down to a 3 TPI, but we're, we're going to run with this and see how long it lasts. It was about $25 for the blade. Um, it's pretty thick. I think it's .025 um, width or um, what, do you, what do you call it? Thickness? Pretty sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean for a, you know, an under, how much should I buy this? It's under $200 bandsaw. It might be $150, $180, somewhere around there. I'm sure it goes on sale, but, um, I mean, this is insane. Like you have to buy a bandsaw that costs like a thousand dollars to even get anywhere close to this amount of resaw capability. So to be able to run slabs through this is just, it's just phenomenal. Um, again, I just got two pieces of steel, sawed it in half, made this little housing because I, you know, I was thinking about this. I, I don't know why I cut it there where I did. I probably should just cut it clean above this and then I wouldn't have it, had to adjust the housing. I think what I had in my head going into this project was that originally I was going to reroute this to its own isolated base because of the fact that I might have to replace the motor. So it would have been easier to not have to run the wiring up through the base. I, I think that's what I had in my head, uh, which is the reason why I did that. So this is definitely going to be a great addition um, to the shop. So. Anyway, if you have any questions about this project, I mean, I'm still going to be tuning it. I have to fine tune um, some of the adjustment dials here. So, you know, you just have to play around with it. Um, yeah, but I was worried that it wasn't going to house um, a half inch blade, but it, it does, but it, it just barely does. So you definitely can't exceed um, half inch. And again, I might have to play with the configuration um, to get it all squirt away but yeah I mean <laughs> I'm pretty excited about it because again this adds so much capability um my other thought for what I was going to do with this I'm kind of rambling now about this but um I might make a sled and kind of try to turn this into some kind of sawmill capability because I mean that's a lot of resaw so you could slide a decent sized log in there and get some green wood if you have it <coughs> if you have it um yeah, thanks for sticking around with this project. Uh, it's pretty neat. So, yeah, if you have any ideas for other things you want to see, let me know in the comments. Um, yeah, anyway, thanks. Bye.